Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Clinch. I'm Justin Peck. I have Keith Robert with me, David Chicken Parm Stewart on the show, as always. Uh, I've got some exciting news for you guys uh, just regarding the MMA. Uh, the MMA world is being taken over, and we're taking it over. Uh, Keith, I will let you do the honors as the founder of the, uh, of the baby. Yeah, um, uh, before we get into that, uh, I, just, I don't want to forget this. I know I speak on behalf of Justin. And Dave, if there's any vets watching right now, we uh, wish you a uh, happy Veterans Day. Um, we're truly thankful for everything you do for us, especially those ones who are currently still in the military. Um, and keep us safe so we can do this. I was actually in the military myself. I am a veteran, so uh, it means a lot to me. So I, uh, I just, if anybody's watching, thank you for you do. Um, what you do is way more important than what we do. Um, so going on, going to transition from there. Um, the, the freedoms they have has let us the thing about what's great about America is that we get to pursue our dreams. And, and what happened is we we're all MMA nuts. We're fanatics. We're the hard, you know, you talk about hardcore fans, we're the hardcore fans of the hardcore fans. Um, and we have a group of guys that's been hanging around for a while, been talking MMA, been really um, making in-depth uh, posts inside the, uh, our partner team uh, sports talk. And uh, we decided we're going to start our own website. So there's a team of seven of us right now, um, myself, uh, obviously us three, Justin and Dave. We got uh, Chris Fizzler from uh, New Jersey, uh, Corey Gronfield of Michigan, Florida, and then we got um, Jason Powers, who's currently in Bahrain, but by way of Florida. Um, so, yeah, we got all of the world covered, and we're, and we're just putting out um, breaking news, putting out great articles. Um, Dave just did a thing breaking down everything outside of, uh, of, or actually all events coming up. Um, Corey and Chris just did a, uh, a great debate, which is a, uh, two guys debating out the main event. Um, I, I did a matches, matches to make after the last, uh, Mexico card. Uh, Jason put out a really good article on Ricardo Lamas. He was picked as our fighter of the week. Um, so we got a lot of unique. Um, obviously, all the clinch episodes are on there. We have a lot of unique things. Um, we're going to have our staff predictions uh, going to be out there um, by tomorrow morning. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff. Obviously, we know we're not as big as is you know the other top MMA sites, but uh, I really think we've only been launched in five days, and, and our our Twitter page is growing, our Facebook page is growing, we have a YouTube page. And and we've got a lot of good stuff out there. We got polls, we got trivia questions. Um, I really think it, it, it's a perfect spot if you're looking for MMA news. All the big news is going to be on our site. So uh, try to help out the little guys. All right, Keith, definitely something that we're all excited about. Um, very looking, very much looking forward to see how big we can grow this thing. And I, I asked, and real quick, I know you want to transition on. I just ask the guys to be patient. Um, obviously, we know that this is still a lot more work to do. Um, some of the links on the page still need to be fixed. Um, some features we're working on that. Um, none of us do this full time, but you know we'd like to. And so our page will never be any worse than it is right now. It only get better. So yeah, we just ask people to be patient. And if you see um, under the contributors uh, tab, you'll see all us in there. All our contact information. Contact us. Tell us what we can improve. Um, what you like, what you don't like, and uh, yeah, we'll try. We'll try to give you the best uh, information out there. All right, thank you, Keith. And what we'll do now, we'll hop into the main card from UFC Mexico. Um, we'll start it out. Uh, just give me your your big takeaway from the prelims. Uh, not, not too much to cover. It wasn't really the best set of fights on the prelims. What was your big thought? Your big takeaway from the prelims? I'll start with you, Dave. Um, my big takeaway was there was a lot of really good finishes. You know, that spinning back fist, you don't really see that that much. Even um, Joe Soto's heel hook, you know, that his ground game was beautiful. Um, just, you know, Max Griffin just coming out there and just bulldogging and just, you know, just great finishes. And that's what the fans love to see. And that really got me pumped up to see the main card was seeing just those great finishes from uh, guys you really don't hear a lot about. But now you will because those are a lot of those are highlight reel knockouts that you'll be seeing uh, a lot in, you know, promotional work for UFC and for MMA. So, and we got to see it, you know, on a card on prelims. So I'm, I thought it was a great to see all those guys and all of them picked up some great wins. 
Keith? Um, yeah, the, the, the guy that I was most impressed with, or I shouldn't say most impressed, but the guy that I uh, that stands out to me is uh, is a Mexican fighter himself, Eric Perez. They were in Mexico. Um, Perez, uh, he was the last fight of the prelims. He's he's very different than most Mexican fighters. Most Mexican fighters are, are trans- more of a Muay Thai style or a pressure boxing style. Uh, Perez has a really good, uh, well-rounded game. He has good takedowns, good uh, submission grappling. And this is obviously a market that's growing for MMA. Um, obviously, it's such a hotbed for boxing. It's a a market that uh, Data White and the rest of the UFC has been trying to get into. And uh, I think Eric Perez is the guy that, that, that they might be able to start promoting. Get him, hopefully, they can get him in some bigger fights. And uh, hopefully, he'll help uh, help grow that market. All right. Uh, for me, my biggest takeaway from it was the fight I was most looking forward to, smiling Sam Alvey fighting uh, Alec Nicholson. I was I was so disappointed in the performance from Alvi. Uh, he picked up the win from an opponent who just, you know, simply got gassed out. And uh, I think he was helped by two inadvertent low blows as well. I think that may have uh, factored in on the judges a little bit on the scorecard, even though there was no deduction or anything. But uh, Sam Alvi, love the guy. Didn't even get the fun interview afterwards. Yeah, that, it's a, it was a shame because usually, like, I usually love watching Sam Alley fight, but it seems like he has a really great fight and then a boring fight and then a really great fight and then a boring fight. So next time Sam Alley fights, it's going to be great. Next time. Next time. That's right. <laughs> and he didn't even get to get on the mic. That was the worst part. He didn't get to get on the mic. <laughs> All right, we'll hop right into the main card now. Uh, we'll, we'll try to make this a speed background. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see how we do with that. Uh, first fight on the card, Alexa Grasso winning over Heather Joe Clark. Uh, very impressive performance for Grasso in her debut. What do you guys? What do you guys think? Um, well, it seems like they put her up against uh, a bum. Basically, this was a, just to showcase her talent. And she obviously her first fight underneath the big lights. She was a little tentative, but she still got the win. I mean, Heather Joe Clark is you know she's nothing really. So they just kind of fed her to the to the it's, wolves in Alex, you know, Alexa Grasso. And I enjoy watching her fight. She's still young, um, undefeated. And I, I think we'll be seeing a lot more of her in the women's strawweight division uh, real soon. I, I just want to know what Heather Joe Clark did to Dave. Did she dump you or something? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no problem. I, I asked her and she said, uh, I can't. I got to fight that week. I said, okay, I'll get you back. <laughs> Years later, good enough. Uh, yeah, um, let's get to Heather Joe Clark first. Um, I'm not going to say she's nothing, but I definitely think she has upset some UFC brass or something because she's been put against Carolina Corkwitz and uh, Kovacavich and uh, Alexa Grasso back-to-back fights. Um, those are some two studs, uh, both ranked the top ten. Um, both gave her um, epic uh, beatdowns, especially um, Carolina. She, I mean, I think I scored two rounds, 10-8. Um, Genda Laxa Grasso, um, I, I, this, this girl is already ranked in our top 10, making her debut, um, in her hometown, extremely impressive. She, I, I already think she's an elite prospect. Um, I think she, she has all the tools to be the champion soon. Um, she is a very fluid striker, um, throws great combinations. She's relentless. You saw her, she was trying to stop the fight. And in a thing that you don't get, especially from the Mexican fighter, but I was just talking about her friends, is like, she has a good ground game. You saw when Heather Joe Clark was trying to take it down. Um, she made it pay for those failed takedowns. So, uh, and, and and obviously with women MMA, one thing that always you want to promote is obviously the Mexican part of her. They're going to want to promote, but they're also the looks. She's a good looking girl. Yep. And and sadly, in this, it's actually that's actually one thing that really matters. So I think this is going to be another girl you're going to see a whole lot of. I agree with that. That she's got the look, and that's more uh, what the UFC likes than the talent in some cases. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to uh, Benio Daryush winning over Rashid Magomedov by decision. Uh, how would you guys feel about that fight? I used to hate Daryush because he beat my favorite fighter, Charlie Brenneman. Let me just, uh, <laughs> those are the good old days. When Brenneman used to fight in the UFC, and uh, I mean, I, I still tell stories like I beat Rick Story as Charlie Brenneman, but um, <laughs> it was not a good fight for either guy. They they were they were both just striking from distance. Nothing really could get inside. Um, very. Poor performance by both of them. Nothing really to be proud of. I know Dariush got the win, but um, it's I was not happy watching this fight. I was I actually picked Dariush. I thought he would get a first round knockout, but unfortunately that did not happen. But uh, 
we'll see where Dariush goes from here. I mean, he his knockout of James Vick the last fight was amazing. That was a hell of a fight. And uh, Mega Midoff's, you know, an up and comer, and he's he looked terrible against Dariush. Yeah, um, I I don't think this fight was as bad as Dave was talking. Just um, both guys are really good, and and I think that was a problem. Uh, Mega Madoff, he's he's a very technical striker. You can see in the third uh, period when he's got a little more aggressive, he actually hurt Darius a couple times. Um, but he's too tentative. He was too he was he wasn't willing to uh, pull the trigger, and it was letting Darius um, get inside and push him against the cage, um, where Darius was winning the the exchanges up against the cage um, in the clinch, the Muay Thai clinch he was getting. Um, I think it was a very strategic uh, move by Darius. Very uh, strategic game plan. Um, he's a really good, uh, uh, good striker. Um, he's got pretty decent power, really good uh, takedowns, and a really good jiu-jitsu game. Um, I really like Darius. I, I think he. I mean, he's already in the UFC top ten rankings. He's got to be borderline our top ten rankings. Um, I, I think he can surprise some people. I, I, I like Darius. I think he's really good. And from there, we will uh, we'll move on to the Tough Latin America three finale. Uh, Martin Bravo winning by knockout in the second round over Claudio Puelas. Nice job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take this first. Yeah. I think it's my first. Um, I'll admit right now that I, I didn't watch any of the uh, Latin America. Um, I didn't really know much about these guys. I read up a little bit about them. They were both the top picks uh, from their coaches. Um, I think uh, Bravo was, what was he with, uh, Forrest Griffin? Um, I was really impressed with him. Um, really impressive with his his, his boxing. Um, he was t- he took some good shots and he exchanged. And he was relentless. I'm sorry, I'm losing my phone. I'm trying to set up. Um, um, I, I was really impressed. I mean, like I don't like you said, I don't really know that much. I don't, to be honest, I don't really know how good the competition was then. But I was really impressed with what I showed, uh, what he showed. Um, I know he's young. Uh, another guy. I, I I can't remember. Well, he's not from Mexico. I don't think he's from. All right, Bravo's from Mexico, and. Uh, the other guy was from Peru or something. Uh, let me double check for you. I don't know, but I, usually what I like to do is I, is I, you guys, I don't know. I try to take some notes about them, and and I and I put some stars and and, and all the stuff that I just said. It's just <laughs> stuff I wrote down. Bravo okay. from Bravo from Mexico and Claudio from Peru. Yeah. Oh yeah. See? <laughs> I actually didn't get to watch this fight. I was actually literally streaming the fights at work, and I got a call to go to a room, and this is the one fight that I missed. But I tried to catch it on YouTube, but they didn't have anything but just highlights in it. So I don't really have much to add. I mean, I, I same thing with Keith. I have not watched a, a tough enough Latin America season of The Ultimate Fighter at all, to be honest with you. So, I mean, these guys um, – I feel like these guys will probably just only fight on Brazil cards. They'll, you'll never see them in America. Which is which is kind of sad, you know. They should kind of bring them here to get news, but we'll just see these guys only fighting at UFC fight nights in Brazil coming up. All right, we'll move on then to Ricardo Lamas winning by submission in the second round over Charles Oliveira, uh, submission of the night, and uh, a lot of people were happy to see it after the the weight loss fiasco. I know I was happy to see it. That's for sure. Um, I mean, Oliveira. I mean, why can't people? Stick to their word. It's, you know, your word is your bond in the UFC. I'm pretty sure I've said something like this similar. It's, if you can't make the weight and you know you can't make the weight, just move up in the weight class. It's, I don't know why these guys still feel like they can get down to that certain weight. And I was happy. I mean, I loved, I've always been a fan of Lamas. Um, he actually fought for the title, but he, you know, he couldn't do it against Jose Aldo. Those last 10 seconds when he faced Max Holloway were probably the best 10 seconds in a UFC fight in years. Yeah. And, and in years. That was the best 10 seconds ever. And I'm glad that Oliveri got what really was coming to him for being unprofessional, missing weight. So, um, Lamas is moving up in the division and, uh, Oliveri, that's two in a row that he's lost. So he's, uh, he's on his way down. Well, I've been watching MMA. I, ha- I was just looking up right now. I've been watching MMA for 21 years now. And I don't remember a string of, of guys missing weight than the last couple months. I know um, the early weigh-ins might be a factor. The IV ban might be a factor. Um, I mean, I don't really know. But it, it's unacceptable. For Charles Oliveira, 
he's missed weight. I think this is his third or fourth time he's missed weight now. He missed it by ten pounds. Um, I mean, this is uh, this is unbelievable. I mean, that's the whole weight class. And, and credit to to Paulo Lamas to take that fight and then um, to win. And before I say anything about Ricardo Lamas, I just want to promote um, um, little little cheap promotion. Uh, right now, if you go to our website, um, the MMA the uh, the the MMA Takeover dot com. Uh, if you go into the news section, you scroll a little bit, you'll find uh, Ricardo Lamas was picks as our fight of the week. Um, and Jason Powers, he writes he writes a fantastic article about him. Um, some of the, I mean, already we knew, and, and Jason Powers is, is a phenomenal phenomenal writer. Um, and you can really get to get to know who Ricardo Lamas is, kind of uh, dissect his career, but just put yourself in a situation that he's going against a you know a top ten ranked guy. A very good fighter, a guy who's huge, who's already huge for the weight class. Then doesn't make the weight. Then you know, Oliver's got you know very good Muay Thai, um, a slick, slick elite ground game. Gets put in a, a chokehold in the high altivation of Mexico. Um, basically gets saved by the bell. Taken down again, is in trouble and scrambles and sticks in a submission um, guillotine on a very uh, good ground fighter. Um, this is the best win of, I think, of Ricardo Lamas' win uh, of his career. I know Jason in his article he puts out uh, a win over Cub Swanson, which obviously is a you know a huge accomplishment too. But um, I was even more impressed with this, depending on all the things that go along with uh, yeah, I think that surrounded the fight. Um, so I'm really glad to see Ricardo Lamas win that fight. Yeah, I think they said Oliveri is one of three fighters that didn't go weeks in advance. I think they said he only went maybe three days before the fight. So he wasn't acclimated to the, the, alti- uh, the, you know, the altitude and everything like that. All right. From there, we'll go into Diego Sanchez winning by decision over uh, Marcin Held. And uh, I just want to say, how about that escape in the first round? <laughs> yeah. um, if I could turn that into like a little picture and have you put it on the website, I'd have you put that next to my name. <laughs> rather than my actual pitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, was a, uh... that was crazy. Um, for On DraftKings, Diego Sanchez was the underdog going into this fight, which is surprising. I know he's kind of past his prime. You know, I know he he was in Bellator. He did a lot of fights in Bellator. He was coming in. Everyone thought that he was just going to walk through Diego Sanchez. And that really didn't happen. I mean – after the after the the beginning of the second round, it, Heald was done. He was gassed, and Diego Sanchez was picking yeah. him on the feet. And maybe this is the old Diego Sanchez is making his uh, one last run in the UFC. I mean, he's been there since the Ultimate Fighter won. You know, he won it against uh, Kenny Ken Flo Florian. But I don't know why people were so down against him. They were betting against him, and they were going with Heald. You know, I mean, Heald's never faced a guy even remotely as good as Diego Sanchez. I know Diego Sanchez has been in the battles and he's contested and he's not where he was once was when he was, you know, fighting BJ Penn back in the day, but I'm happy that Diego Sanchez got a legit win and not over someone like Ross Pearson where they just gave it to him. Um, so, so I actually have one of my best um, predictions tonight I've ever had. Um, I went 11 and two. Um, unfortunately, I picked the last two fights wrong. Um, I picked uh, held in this fight. Um, so, so the difference. Um, but one thing I, I would like to say is, before I was talking, um, I came in where I was talking to the chat, and, and, and they asked me what I picked. Don't be surprised if, if Diego wins this fight. Um, just stylistically, these both are great. Uh, they're both ground fighters. Diego's chin is gone. Um, he, he's because of all the, he's been in so many wars. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be doing a top twenty-five fights. Of all of you in UFC all time starting in December, kind of kind of like doing the twenty five days of Christmas kind of thing, but uh, you know the number one revealed on Christmas Day, um, and, and Diego's going to be in it a lot, like probably more than any other fighter, and uh, all his stand up is gone, his wrestling is non existent anymore, but he's still a fantastic grappler, and and he displayed that he displayed it, um, yeah I agree with Dave, um, Marcin held he he gas bad the 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 uh, altitude got to him. But that doesn't take away the fact that Diego Sanchez, is he, he's been to Abu Dhabi. If you qualify for Abu Dhabi, you're, you're as legit as it comes. 
and and to go against another uh, international phenomenon. Um, so I I am not as big as Dave thinking he's going to make a run for the UFC, but it, it was nice to see, see him win. He's got a little more gas in the tank. He's got a little more gas. I mean, they're, they're not going to give him a title fight, but they'll just give him uh... – They'll just put him against other veterans, you know, get the, the MMA fans one last uh, look at the nightmare, Diego Sanchez. All right, and I, I want to move on into the main event. But before we do that, Keith, you were mentioning how, how well you did in the pickums, And I just want to throw out there for everybody that um, we, we do a pick'em league, us and, and the guys from Sports Talk, where this, uh, this project was born. We do a pick'em. We've been doing it for... The entire year, I believe. I, I believe we started in January. And on this last card, I came in last place. I picked nine <laughs> out of 13 fights correctly. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that's that's good enough to win almost almost anywhere. But uh, the, just the guys that we play with know so much yeah. that I, I get nine for 13 and finished in last place. Yeah, I, I went 11 for 13 and didn't even finish in first. <laughs> I think at one point I was like eight and zero, and I was in third place. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's so, the uh, uh, Jason Powers. Yeah, Jason Powers is on Stephanos. He uh, he went twelve out of thirteen. He's currently um, winning the yearly uh, competition. I know me and Zach are really close behind, um, but I don't think either one of us are gonna catch him. And another guy, um, unfortunately, he didn't get in the first season of the pick, so that's the first two months of the season. It's Chris Fizzo. That guy is like. It's like a poor money. Yeah, he can pick and fight. He can, he can pick fights. So, so uh, yeah, we challenge. We challenge. We'll challenge. Hey, I'll throw this out there. We'll challenge any website. You get the staff of any other just one of these major websites. You want to go head to head? Well, I'll take that challenge. You pick your five best guys. I'll take our five best guys. Let's do it. I agree. I think we'd stack up very, very well. Very well. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, as we're bragging, we had our best, our best showing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, now I'm going to go into the fight that we uh, that I picked wrong. Uh, <laughs> Tony Ferguson, Tony Ferguson winning over uh, Rafael dos Anjos by decision. Uh, great fight. Um, I, I want to throw out there that I thought Ferguson used his range very well, and you know didn't let yeah. dos Anjos get in where he's comfortable. And I think that was a difference in the fight. How did you guys feel? Um, when I did DraftKings, I didn't pick dos Anjos once. I knew Tony Ferguson would win. Um, ever since, I mean, Rafael Dos Anjos looks like a totally different person, like his physique and everything since that fight, uh, against Pettis, he looked like a, he, he was a monster. And then once he lost to Alvarez, he, he just looked like a totally different person and he was getting picked apart by Tony Ferguson. And during the fight, I'm going to give Tony Ferguson a little credit. He hurt Dos Anjos with his eye. He could have struck right there. He could have pounced on him. Because Herb, I forgot, I don't, I don't remember the referee, but he could have pounced on him because if the referee doesn't see it, it's it's all fair game. But, you know, he actually yeah, yeah. wanted the referee to look at it, and that's great sportsmanship from a fighter. You don't see that. Most fighters, they'll, they'll come at you, and they'll keep swinging, and they'll get the win. But um, I thought Tony Ferguson looked amazing in this fight, and I, I think they if they don't give him a title shot now, they're, they're wasting a great talent in, in Tony Ferguson. Yeah, um, first I want to talk about Dos Anjos. Um, obviously, he's two, two losses in a um, Like you said, his, his physique looks much different. Um, I'm not going to speculate on that. I think we can kind of all read between the lines. Um, but the first round, he looked like himself. He was he was teeing off by Ferguson. He clearly won that round. Um, he had him hurt many times. He was working the jab, um, working the leg kicks. Um Working the body, he he uh, he was putting the pressure on him. Um, it was a really close. It looked like the second round that uh, that he was gonna, he might take him out. Um, in the second round, pretty early, what Dave pointed out was when he he poked some people, uh, Dos Anjos in the eye. Now, I'm not making excuses, but um, from that point on, uh, Dos Anjos was much was much different. I know he he complained to his corner in between rounds, saying he couldn't see well. Um, whether that was a factor, I don't know. I'm, I mean, obviously, Dos Anjos, he seemed to be slowing down greatly, which could be, you know, the altitude and everything. And 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 I don't want to take anything for Ferguson. Like like Dave said, um, he was he, he used his range great. And one thing he did about he did about his range was is a guy that has long range. It's not always it's not always about keeping him at the end of the punches. It's also 
of, of being in and out and changing the distance that he, he would he would he would he would work on the outside and also he'd step in he'd close the distance and hit a flurry and step back out and it seemed like the one thing that was most impressive is every time Dos Santos started getting something going, if he landed something big, Ferguson would answer right out. Like if 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 Dos if Dos Anjos landed a three punch combination on his way out, Ferguson would land something. Um, and in what I was most impressed is is how um how how much of a cardio like his his cardio is insane to be in that altitude to be pressing the whole flight. Either he's pressing, um, you know, from rounds two through five, um, and and. His in his in fight adjustments were, were phenomenal. Um, Tony Ferguson, I was I was never a believer in Tony Ferguson. Um, I thought Dos Santos doing this. I, I don't believe it now. Um, I don't. I think he they get, they get two guys fighting tomorrow night. I think he'd have a really good shot at beating either guy. Yeah, and um, I, I was going to say I think he did. Uh, just one other thing I wanted to throw out there. I think Ferguson did a great job taking away the Sanyo's legs leg kicks. Uh, there's something everybody looks for from the Sanyos every fight, and they were they were absent for most of the fight, and it was you know all the pressure he was putting on him. So uh, that was something from well, Ferguson. I saw that I, I thought that was pretty great. Yeah, that's one thing I, I was I was really surprised um, was that RDA was landing those leg kicks so much in the first round, and then he just abandoned them. Um, it could be a result of cardio, um, or it just be could. Could be Ferguson made the proper adjustments and he started pressing the fight. When you're pressing a guy, guys, um, guys can't get the light kicks off when they're in the face. I mean, it's something that Donald Cerrone uh, has been known to have trouble with. Um, Edson Barboza, obviously, he's probably the best uh, light kicker in the game right now, and and that's something that been the the blueprint to beating him is is not not giving him any space. Um, there's another guy we're gonna talk about later. Uh, that likes to use leg kicks, and if you if you get in his face, he's not able to tee off with the leg kicks. Um. Yeah, and uh, just the only other thing from there, uh, you guys both kind of mentioned title fight for Ferguson. What's next for him? I agree. It's got to be the winner of this McGregor and Alvarez fight. But, you know, the concern that you have with that is if McGregor wins, is it something we're going to get to see, or does he go – continue doing his own thing. Apparently he has an announcement after um, and I'm wondering if that'll have, give us any light on it, but unfortunately, uh, I, I don't know what we're, what we're really looking at with Ferguson at this point. I don't think they'll give him the title shot right away. Unfortunately, which is a shame because I don't think the UFC sees a lot of money in a, in a Tony Ferguson title shot, which is a cry and shame because uh, Tony Ferguson deserves it hands down. Um, I, I feel like they may do if Khabib wins tomorrow, maybe that will be a title eliminator fight, but it, it really shouldn't. I feel like Ferguson's been fighting. Khabib's been on the sideline for a, you know, a year and change. I say give it to Ferguson, but I don't think you've seen about money now. That's it. They, they're, try, they're just getting the money fights in while they can. They don't care about the rankings, which is a shame. That's, that's why they have rankings is to have guys compete to get to the title, be the best they can. And Tony Ferguson is the best in that division, besides the champ. You know, he's I he should be ranked number one, but I don't think they'll give it to him. I want to see what uh, Keith thinks about if they'll ever give Ferguson a title fight right now, or, or if he's got one one or two more fights in him. Well, but, I mean, he went to, what does he want? Nine fights in a row in the lightweight division. That's not yeah. in it's crazy impressive. He's beaten top top guys in the division. Um, obviously, I I wrote an article on Monday. Uh, called who's next it's it's predicting not predicting it's a uh, more of if i'm in charge of matchmaking who am i putting who against who um from the winners it's not my saying who i think the usc is gonna do so basically to me it comes down to two people uh ferguson or herbie um obviously for be women's tomorrow night uh he's he has a strong case um but like we say the the thing about ferguson is he's been more active he's been, you know, they both beat Dos Santos would probably be the both biggest wins. Um, I mean, you could argue Habib's biggest run would be Michael Johnson. Um, why I, I can see why they would choose either guy. Um, obviously, the, the the high ranked of of uh, Habib, the undefeated record, the the fact you've been hearing that him and him and McGregor has been getting, you know, been going back and forth. Yeah. Behind than Ferguson has. So I could see that angle. Um, the the wrestler, you know, I 
the, the Conor McGregor hasn't really faced an elite rep. Yeah, if it's McGregor, he's faced everybody, you know, all types of fighters. Um, for Ferguson, the the the, the win streak is a, is a strong reason, and obviously um, the, the the Mexico thing. They still want to get them out. They have a Mexico champion uh, would be huge. Um, but the third, the wild card, and if you read, um, you, I'm not going to give away any of my other stuff, but it, you read it on read it on uh, our website. But uh, my prediction is that Conor McGregor wins. I think they do a third fight with Nick Diaz, uh, Nate Diaz first. I think they I think they finish off the trilogy. Uh, so that's that's who I think they'll do. Um, I don't agree with it. I, I definitely think Ferguson. Uh, he's he's put his doing. I mean, you you went nine in a row. He's taken out everybody. So. And if one wants to find all these articles, what's the website again to find all these great articles written by great people? <laughs> the uh, the 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 M M A T T H E. All right. Uh, from there, we'll go in. Let's hop into two hundred five. Uh, we're, we're talking about it any time McGregor comes up, obviously. Um, we're going to hop right into 205, and we're going to do a whole list of predictions here. Uh, we're we're going to do start from the bottom, the prelims, fight past prelims, and work all the way up to the top. Uh, first fight that we'll get to see tomorrow uh, for a night I'm very much looking forward to, uh, Caitlin Shaku. <clears throat> sorry, start <laughs> over. <laughs> No, you had it right. Kaylin, Kaylin Chukagian. I practiced that in my head for, for about five minutes before we, we got there, and I still screwed up. We'll be fighting Liz Carmouche. Um, Vegas has Liz as the underdog here. Uh, everybody that I'm seeing pick the fight doesn't see it that way. Uh, I'll, I'll give my prediction, but I'll let you guys go first. I actually – um, I'll go first. I actually picked uh, Caitlin to actually to win this fight. Um, Carmouche has had a lot of battles. She's been in there with the best, but I feel like she's um, I, I I just don't think she could do it against a, a better you know wrestler than than, than Caitlin. I'm going to butcher her name, Chikugan. So I I agree with her being the underdog. Um, I feel like that Liz Carmouche is 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 she's uh, she's been in there with the best. She you know the first ever female fight had Liz Carmouche in it. So she's been in there with Ronda Rousey. She didn't go her way. But um, I don't think Liz is going to win this fight whatsoever. I actually picked her to lose by decision. So I think it's going to be a, a, a loss by decision for Liz Carmouche and Caitlin Kukajin will pick up the win. All right. Um, yeah, I, I think Vegas has it right. I think uh, Caitlin Ch uh, Chikagin is uh, de definitely the favorite. Um. Liz Camus, she, she hasn't fought in a year and a half. Um, she dealt with injuries, different other things. Um, that's a long time to be out. And in her last fight, um, she went against uh, Lauren Murphy. Um, she won a decision that most people scored against her. At the same time, uh, Chikagin's uh, only fight in the, in the UFC at debut was against Lauren Murphy, where she won. Um, it basically, this is going to be a grappler versus striker matchup. Uh, Camus is going to want to get inside. She's much shorter of the two fighters. She's going to get inside, uh, get a body lock, try to get a takedown. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think Chikagin's pretty good. She, she trains out of Henzo Gracie's gym, um, which is only <laughs> – she trains only a block away from where she's fighting the massive wig on. Um, <laughs> and, and she's a very good technical striker. I think, she, uh, I think she's going to win. Um, the thing about Carmouche, and I know this is – I'm going way too long than we wanted to, is, is Carmouche has been around a long time, but I also feel like women's MMA has evolved. And she was in that – she was in the last stage of, of women's MMA, and it is is passed up. The, there's better strikers now, better grapplers, um, and uh, I, I really think Chikagin wins. The one thing I'm worried about is Chikagin's last fight against Lon Murphy. Um, she tended to, to be a little uh, too um, patient, and I'm worried that in, in the big stage she might do the same thing. But if she doesn't, if she comes out swinging, I think she went pretty easily. Uh, I'm on board with you guys. I have Chukajian winning by decision, uh, improving to nine and zero in her MMA career. All right, we'll uh, we'll hop over to Jim Miller fighting Tiago Alves. Uh, it's out of catch weight now, and uh, again, the whole weight cut thing is becoming an issue. Uh, we're not sure if you know IVs need to come back or what needs to change, but uh, we can we can speculate on that later. Let's, let's talk about the fight itself. And what are your predictions? Um, I'll take this one first. Uh, Tiago Alves, it's, it's, just, it's just insane. When I heard he was dropping down to lightweight, 
Um, like Jason Powers pointed out, this is a guy who struggled to make welterweight. Um, this fight would have been great in 2007 when they both were in their primes. Um, Jamel was a you know borderline top 10 lightweight. Uh, obviously, uh, Tiago Alves uh, was a good, true contender. He, he fought uh, George St. Pierre at UFC 100 for the title. Um, it, it, this, this fight has so many question marks because we haven't seen Alves. He's been out. Um, everyone knows Jim Miller's declining. Um, Jim Miller was never that great of a wrestler. Um, he was a very, very good grappler, but not that good of a wrestler. Um, he's a very – he's a decent striker, but he has to be in that phone booth area. Um, he's not good outside or inside. He's not really a brawler to be inside, but he's not, he doesn't have the range to be outside. And, and Al's best game is that in, that mid-range uh, where he lays off kicks and has a Muay Thai clinch. And, and Al's always had a great takedown defense. Now, obviously, the gas tank, that's the big question. You know, he had to cut weight. He didn't make it. Um, he can't weigh in over 173 pounds, so can he fully hydrate? Um, I don't know. I'm going to take Al's um, just because in their primes, I thought he was the better one of the two. Um, he still has faced higher competition um, recently than um, Miller, so I'll take Alves. But they, I'm very tentative on that decision. I actually took Alves too. And th um, when we were doing all of our pickums, we were doing, um, you know, who we think we win, how they would win, and then there would be a fight of the night candidate, uh, a lock in pick, your, you know, and then an upset of pick for the website. I actually had this one as my fight of the night pick because I got a feeling it's just going to be a sloppy fight. They're both going to be just swinging for the fences, which is what the fans in New York City are going to go crazy for. They, you, this, I got a feeling they're not going to be um, so much – the fans in MSG don't really care about critique, you know, like nice jujitsu. They're just looking for the brawls and the bloodbaths and – I think this is going to be a fight of the night just because it's going to be a sloppy fight. They're both going to be gassed. You know Jim Miller bleeds every time he shaves, for Christ's sake. So um, I took Alves to win by round three decision uh, – round three TKO. I think he's going to knock Miller out. That's, that, that's what I'm thinking. But, um, again, with the weight cut issue, UFC has to do something. I know they're trying to help the fighters out by doing it early in the morning. They have um, strategies in place to weigh him. Up, up in the upcoming weeks to make sure they hit their weights at certain times. If they don't hit it away at this kind of, you know, certain issue, then the fight's, you know, basically off because they're not going to risk um, their health. I mean, people have died cutting weight, which is which is a, absolutely crazy. And yet these guys are still, you know, thinking they can get down to a certain weight. Um, so I'm glad that we were actually able to see this fight because coming up in a while, we'll, uh, some bad news did happen, unfortunately, today. But I'm glad that um, this fight is actually still happening. Oh, one yeah, one was... thing I want to say. Go ahead, Keith. No, I mean one thing I want to say, and I, I think Dave would agree with this. Well, I think we've all said that the, I, the banning the IVs has been a bad decision by the UFC. But at the end of the day, this, these guys missing weight is not the UFC's fault, and I think we'd all agree with this. It's on the fighter. It, it's your responsibility. You're a professional. You have one thing. You know, you have one responsibility: to make to make weight and to fight. That's their full-time job. That's their number one responsibility. Um, so I think we'd all agree that these these guys missing missing away is not the UFC's fault or the athletic commissions or anybody's fault. It's their own fault. I mean, a lot of these people, this is their only job. They don't have, you know, their job is training for a fight. That's it. And yet they still can't do that properly. These guys have a lot of money in the bank. They don't have to worry about getting another job. You know, I mean, like, you know, Stipe Miocic is a, is a fireman on the side. He's got two jobs, this and that. If, I think if you have one job to do. Why can't you do it right? Just just make the weight, or go up and wait, and then just be walking around comfortably at that certain weight class where you know you can compete in. But it just boggles the mind that it's still happening to this day. Yeah, if you if you told me, you know, when when Tiago Alves was a welterweight that he would change weight, I would assume that he would want the middleweight, not not the other way around. <laughs> right, I was uh. I was with you guys in your pick up until the weight, uh, the weight cut thing. Um, I'm not confident that I was just going to be able to step into the cage and be fully, uh, you know, fully hydrated, fully energized after uh, the stipulations you asked to meet in the morning. Um, I'm taking Jim Miller to put him in a submission early in the in the first, not early in the first round, but in the first round, early in the fight. You know, uh, I have him putting getting a submission win over Alves uh, just. Energy levels, you know, not not actually. I think Alba's going to make a mistake early, and Miller's going to capitalize. 
short flight. Yeah. And just for the record, I hope you're right. I hope Miller wins. All right, then we'll move on. There's a welterweight matchup. Uh, Bilal Muhammad, remember the name. Remember the name. Remember the name versus Vicente Luque. It's, it's plain and simple. The guy who's got the best nickname is going to win this fight. Remember the name. Um, or, uh, the fight he originally had for this, he was going up against Lyman Good. And Lyman Good, he uh, trains in New York. He does. Uh, he's with Tiger Shulman. A couple of my buddies actually used to uh, do jiu-jitsu, and he was there. And Louis Gaudino was there. And Uriah Hall, before he uh, he jumped ship to make more money, he used to fight with uh, Tiger Shulman. But um, I picked uh, Muhammad to win by unanimous de de uh, decision. Um, he, he looked great in his last fight. Um, so I feel like he's going to ride that momentum, and uh, I feel like he'll pick up another win. And can, we, can everybody just do a favor and just remember the name, and then we'll all be good. Uh, I think this is a sneaky pick on the card. I think this is a sneaky fight that uh, might surprise a lot of people.